Thank you, Greg. So I'm going to talk about the same topic, but from a slightly different perspective. So we've heard from Greg when we should do the genetic testing. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about some of the specific syndromes that he covered and what some of the features of those are. No disclosures. So we saw a very similar slide in that most cancers are actually sporadic, so we're looking at a smaller portion of, of cancers that do have some sort of a genetic component to it. And I'll go through each one of these and what, what each one means. So just like Greg, I'm going to start with the two most common. So if you remember nothing else from this talk, remember these two because these are the two that you're more likely to see. Uh, and if, if you, I know there's some people in the audience that have yet to take their board certification exams, and so these tend to come up a lot on that as well. So let's start with HNPC, or hereditary non-polyposis colon cancer. Uh, it does have an autosomal dominant inheritance pattern with a lifetime risk of about 80%. Uh, so even if you do inherit the gene, there's not 100% penetrance of the phenotype, even if you have the genotype. On average, these people develop cancer in their late 40s. And as Greg mentioned, it's due to a DNA mismatch repair genes, of which there are several, the most common of which being HMLH1, HMSH2, uh, and secondarily, you also see HMSH6, PMS2, and a few others. There are a few features that are tip-offs to the presence of HNPCC. Uh, in particular, if you see someone that has synchronous or metachronous tumors, that's a red flag. And these patients tend to have an adenomatic carcinoma sequence that can be faster than the typical 10 years that we see in the sporadic colon cancers. So for that reason, if we know that they have this, we're going to screen them more, more frequently. You saw something very similar to this, uh, uh, appear this genetic testing for microsatellite instability. Basically, you compare a patient's specimen to some known areas of, of microsatellite stability, and depending on how many areas of difference there are, they're either classified as MSI low, intermediate, or high. Uh, HNPCC tumors tend to be MSI high. There's a couple other features that they have. They tend to be poorly differentiated, have a mucinous histology, and also, if you look under the microscope, they have this Crohn's-like reaction or peritumoral lymphocytes. There are a number of associated lymph uh, malignancies that these patients are at risk for as well. Endometrial cancer, particularly if they have a mutation in HMSH6, up to 70% of these patients can have endometrial cancer. Uh, but there is a number of other ones, gastric, urothelial, biliary, pancreas, small bowel, and CNS malignancies, which we'll get to in a minute. So when you're doing your history and physical, it's really key to go through and try and tease out from these people if they have any of these, these instances. Because